the demo we have uh, here at E3 uh, that we're letting people play. Um, just so everyone knows, this is uh, this is a living game. We still have a ways to go uh, to finish off the game and completely polish it. So we might see some hiccups uh, along the way, but we fully assume that we're super proud to be here to show it off. Uh, we've been working a long time on this, and and it's finally exciting to to be able to to show it and have people play it and send us feedback. So, so here we're gonna go. Carl is gonna show off his uh, skills. His gazelle <laughs> rustling his, skills. Yeah. His gazelle skills. Uh, and here we're gonna start with uh, a camp. So these camps, these are military locations. Uh, he's gonna use Senu, right? That's right. Senu. Senu she's is a the, beauty. Yeah, she's a beauty. <laughs> uh, she's a great scout. Uh, so right now Carl's using her to to tag the enemies, but also tagging opportunities in the in the camp. Now, the question might be, why would someone infiltrate such a location uh, outside of quests? So there is a quest that actually takes place here. In the demo, we've disabled the quest so that we can focus on the world and what happens with the world. Mm -hmm. Later on, there's going to be more streams with quests so that uh, we can kind of spread the, the, the love, the content. But for now, we're just kind of cutting loose in the open world and exactly. uh, going to see what is in store for us here at this camp. Now, with the tagging, uh, I'm noticing, you know, one of the new features here is that levels are popping up yep. over the enemy's heads as you are tagging. Uh, yes. So uh, what what can the player read into those levels as to what kind of challenge they're going to face? Yeah, so, so by going a lot more action RPG, uh, what's happening here is that right now Bayek is level 20 and he's facing off against enemies that are at an equivalent challenge. Mm -hmm. And so this would be considered a, a fair you know, challenge fight in this part of the world. Um, and we'll see that as, uh, we'll, we'll see later on, there's another camp with enemies that are level 25. And you'll see that the feedback's slightly different. This is to really clarify to people, levels matter, gear matters, uh, taking on higher level enemies. It's doable, mm -hmm. but they're tougher not only in stats, but they're also tougher in behavior. So the higher level they are, they have more capacities, more abilities, stronger weapons. So you might want to think twice before taking them exactly. on, or get some better gear, or just light your arrows on fire, yes. apparently. What are you doing there, Carl? I think I'm going to cause a little bonfire down here. Why not? Because it's not hot enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just a little more warmth from the bonfire. Yeah. Speaking of which, my feet are on fire. We are in the middle of the yeah, sun it is, right It here. is really hot <laughs> out we here. We suffer for your entertainment Listen, viewers. This is the, the live streaming <laughs> equivalent of method acting is, you know, we Hayek <laughs> is warm right now. You think that hood is like, you know, yeah. keeping him cool? That that hood is warm. <laughs> and and I will say for the, oh God, for the fans line. out there who Oh, the lion's oh, attacking God. the lion's horse. Attacking the horse. He's got a snack on well, some horse meat. it is a distraction. Meat. He's <laughs> been caged up movement. for a while. So th that's something that we fully embrace in here. So all the NPCs of the world, all the humans, all the animals, they have a full life in the world. They have needs. They have wants. Uh, animals, uh, you know, they, they hunt, they sleep, they find shade. Uh, so in this case, this lion has been captured and been put in uh, a cage. And... At this point, it becomes an opportunity for the player. It, you can't always guarantee it, but um, okay. So these guys are—they sense something. They've seen a lion getting released. They've seen. <laughs> kind of hard to miss that one. <laughs> yeah, a fire. There you go, Carl. Know something's going well down. Done. Well done. All right. Nice job, Carl. Thank there you. we go. So Gwyneth we just picked away. up a, a bow. So this is something that's really important uh, in uh, in Assassin's Creed Origins. It's gear. Um, oh, <gasps> Goodbye, lion. Terrible. He was he was so kind to you. Wow. He attacked Helping the you. horse. He should have been attacking. No real horse. lions were harmed. Out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> so so we picked up a bow, and we saw that it was a it was oh a blue God. bow, which means that it's a common weapon. So mm -hmm. rarities do matter in this game. Yeah. Uh, the more rare uh, the equipment is, the more attributes it has, the more properties it has. So as opposed to just does does some more damage, it cannot have other properties. Uh, like what is an example? Exactly. So, so other properties could be things like poison tipped. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, be, being able to generate adrenaline. Adrenaline is a is a concept. Uh, it's a resource in the, the combat system that allows uh, Bayek to unleash uh, a fury of attacks or or just devastating, overpowering attacks. And you can build adrenaline through the combat system. And uh, some weapons charge differently than others, so this is part of the depth of the combat that we want players to, to mess around with. And this is a whole new combat system, you guys. Boom, headshot. It's, it's way different than the, oh. the feeling before of not sort of getting an assassin. He's dazed. Take him out. It's poor guy, helmet. poor guy. Oh, poor guy. Oh, he's... Ooh, he can cover some ground. So this guy's a commander. That's the, the gold icon. Uh-oh. 
Not for long. There we go. There yeah. we go. Dead. <laughs> so there we go. So killed. So <laughs> here we found a Very second killed. bow. So in a military location, uh, military locations are great for finding equipment mm -hmm. uh, and new gear. Uh, aside from playing quests, these are also places to, to be able to, to upgrade bike with new, uh, new weapons. Loot all that. So here we found a bow. Oh, we leveled up. Uh, which oh, gives right. ability points, so we'll, we'll check that out in a second. Check it out now. Yeah, and we found a shield. Oh, cool. Nice All right, so here we're Carl. looking at sort of the, the skill tree, and I, I'm seeing three different yeah. branches. Yeah, it's it's more of a graph. Uh, what okay. that means is there are flavors. So on the one side, we, we, what you see here is the uh, the Master Seer. This is more the abilities that are aligned with uh, manipulation. Mm -hmm. So manipulating the environment, uh, animals, and uh, NPCs. Uh, in the center, we have the warrior aspect, which is really delving deep into fight. And uh, the hunter aspect, which is more the stealthy approach of being an assassin or being a ranger. And the idea is players can dedicate themselves or go through the graph however they want. That's why it's a graph, because they can actually uh, kind of spread themselves as they wish. They can really craft their own uh, their own assassin. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can even focus on one area. If you want to be the absolute ultimate warrior, yeah, the ultimate, ultimate warrior. warrior. You can you can dedicate yourself. So the last ability on each graph, uh, you can keep pumping points into it. Uh, so you can really become that super powerful archetype that you wish to play. You just got to chase down a fluorescent outfit, and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of player would you be, Ash? What's your personal favorite style? Uh, personally, well, we should we should get Carl to, to buy something here. We go for the enhanced warrior bow. Enhanced warrior bow. The warrior bow is super cool. We haven't seen it yet, so maybe we should switch to it if we can. Yep. We did pick up a few new bows, right? Yeah, yeah we should yeah, check yeah, out the new gear. Check out our gear. Definitely check out the new gear. So uh, in terms of my, my style, I would I would say I'm somewhere between hunter and warrior. I can't choose one or the other. I sometimes prefer stealth, sometimes prefer just duking it out with the guys. Um, that's my style. But that, that's one thing we wanted to cater to is that we have uh, a lot of fans who either play stealth or play uh, pure mm -hmm. combat. It depends and on the mood. we wanted to give them a control over that. Yeah. So here we can see that Carl put on a new bow. Uh, you also had a new shield. Put on the shield, put on the shield. Let's new see. everything. New bow, shield. new is shield. Is it really going to be better? Let's have a look. Oh, oh, yeah. It's way better. So oh, you can wow. see the, the shield adds to, to the player's resistance. Okay. It was quite significant. And we can see it has a property, which is that um, when you block uh, a hit, you generate adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So the idea yeah. is with gear, you can actually start crafting, again, the way you fight, the way you stealth. We can see the crafting at the bottom there. Uh, so just, just like combat, there's no longer this concept that you can one-shot assassinate just anybody. Mm -hmm. Enemies that are higher level, you'll do stealth damage. But if you want to one-shot them, be that true lethal assassin, you have to craft better hidden blades. You gotta work hard at it. Or, and now we're going for a little boat ride. Yeah. Just yeah, trying to cool down in the sea, which I wish I could do right now, because <laughs> I am on fire. <laughs> Pretty hot. So this is the amazing <laughs> tech Singapore has been working on the water. I think it's some of the most beautiful water in it's any gorgeous. game. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's completely seamless. You, we can at some point we'll dive underneath. For, for now, um, you know we have an island here. Let's maybe at some point explore the island. Well, this lake is really big. Yeah, can we just get a sort of look at how yeah, sure. how big this is? So this great. is one Take of the a things. look at this lake. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. You can I'm see the, 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 the draw distance are absolutely stunning. Yeah, this is for you folks watching. This is running on the Xbox One X. Yeah. It, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it, it's really allowing us to showcase what we can push with our engine, the beauty of the world. We, we really want to do Egypt justice and 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 show it off. Show off our artists. Show off our, our technical uh, technical people, our programmers who who bring this to life. It's gorgeous. So here we can see some boats in the distance. This uh, this bigger ship here. There's there's always opportunities. The li the world is alive. Mm -hmm. You know, fishermen are out catching fish. They'll take their their goods to to shore, to docks, take them to the markets, go home and sleep at night. And there's always opportunities for the player here. All right, out for a little swim. And you mentioned <laughs> underwater. Uh, let's let's take a little dive. <laughs> okay, let's take sure, a little let's dive. Go down. Take a look. Uh, you know, I there see something dangerous. Off in the horizon there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, what is that? It's a hippo. Oh, man, do we have other He looks creatures? pretty friendly. Let's get closer. <laughs> See what happens. That's a good idea. Very good idea. Or not. Carl has a great track record with <laughs> animals, so uh, <laughs> nothing could go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but you've, so heard, you you've heard about his stories from Singapore, I think. <laughs> uh, so here, so, so Ooh, this is a location 
Uh, the reason there's loot here, the question might be, why is there loot here? Uh, why the reason there's loot there here is actually this island. Um, it's uh, it's where the Ptolemies, so the the guard force, mm -hmm. they use this island as a way to uh, to stop, to take a break, to to actually refill on some of their stocks. Yeah, like mm -hmm. And uh, so here we can see there's actually a guard on the other side who's been killed by what? I don't know, but. Maybe the hippo. Not a hippo. No, he, he's a good guy. I <laughs> think we should say a hi. Nice, nice dude. <laughs> he's a nice dude. Oh, I got a spear. I got a spear. Use the spear. Switch the spear. Okay, let's switch. Yeah, because that's the thing. We've seen sort of that uh, that short curved sword in yeah, action. The yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's there there is a variety of weapons, and the sort of the reach of the longer weapons is going to affect how you are in combat. Exactly. Uh, so so we have uh, a ton of types of weapons. So eight melee weapons, uh, four types of bows, uh, and this is just the types. Then within them, there's levels, attributes, properties, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, it's, it's a completely sim seamless system you here. We're using the bow in water. You should get in um, closer, Carl, and see what happens. Like is those a birds, if Carl, if Carl was good, he can <laughs> shoot those birds down. I got other problems right now. I need to deal with this uh, angry beast. They're just trying to say hi. Okay. You know? I, I feel like you're engaging it on its home turf. Like, maybe they're slower on land. You don't want to... Oh, God. And he's using the spear. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> you're smacking the hippo with oh, your spear. Oh, man. the poor hippo. What if it's a mama? Now, you know what? Oh, now you've gotten Carl. him angry. He just wanted to say hi. Oh, I think boy. if it's oh, a mama, boy. Carl's in even more trouble. Yeah. Let's let's keep circling you're, it. You're vicious, yeah. No hippos were harmed in the making of this demo. No, it's no actual hippos no were actual harmed hippos. in the making of Assassin's Creed. This Origins. one's being harmed, though. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, so when you loot a hippo, what are you, what are you gaining from this beast? So... <laughs> <laughs> what was the purpose of this massacre? Do you ever think he would say that sentence yeah. in public? <laughs> uh, so animals... Uh, so, so the fauna of Egypt Whoa. is... Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just throw that guy off his boat? Yeah. Poor guy. Sorry. So this is... Sorry, buddy. There's a hippo just over there. Careful, huh? You can use a corpse as a float. You'll this be fine. This is Carl style. This is Carl style. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, obviously, Egypt, it's, re it's, it's very well known for its, its fauna, its, its wildlife, and we need it to represent that properly here. Um, and then we have to say, well, it matters to the player on some level. So this is part of the progression system. So you gain materials that you would use to, to craft uh, some of your gear. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so that's... <laughs> oh! oh! You're just a shit no, starter, no, aren't you, Carl? This is military, it's all right. These are military dudes. Oh, <laughs> oh put, uh, put He's on, on fire, fire now. Fire. Okay. Ooh, oh, fire on a here. boat. That's, uh, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, the fisherman's coming in dangerously. Oh, boy. Is someone else mixing it up over there? There we go. Oh, oh, oh now oh, the boat's no, on fire. Guys coming for me, though. He knew that his boat was in trouble. I better leave. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave him to tread water. Yeah. So you know what? If, if the situation was slightly different... I love Carl how this guy's just along for the ride. He's yeah, just in front of you like, what chilling. is happening? Yeah. <laughs> the guy's just chilling. The thing is, Bayek is a Magi. Mm -hmm. They are protectors of Egypt. Uh, they're protectors of the, the Egyptian way of life. And Egyptians have a high respect for Magis, and they uh. go to them for help. This is actually feeds into the questing system, actually. So, as a Magi, he respects them. He's going to mm -hmm. let them take his boat for a ride. You do you, Bayek. You do you. <laughs> Set boats on fire. I like it too because he's not like obviously the boat's important to that dude. Like it's probably his livelihood. He's like, look, man, you can you can take this wherever you want, but I'm I need it when you're done. <laughs> yeah, just be sure you bring it back in one piece. He'll even wait a bit. Eventually he'll leave, but he'll wait a bit for now. He's watching me, Kevin. So courteous. He's like, so hey, courteous. in case you need a getaway vehicle, I'm here, bro. Cool. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So, so here, this is this is another military camp, but this one's slightly different. This one's a wharf. Uh, here, what we what we wanted to show is just what it's like to take on enemies that are much higher level. So mm -hmm. here, we'll see some guards. So there's some in the front gate there. So level 25, you see that the badge is red, which is kind of telling the player, yes, you can try. You can try. Try your best. You Take it on at him. Give it a shot. But it's going to be a very difficult fight because you're you're not at their level just yet. Eventually, with by by going through quests, by completing locations in the world, uh, you will level up enough. So I would recommend just <laughs> yeah, Carl. Trying. Carl, what's your plan here? Are you going to take yeah. on this How are you challenge? Do this? Let's. Oh, this guy's. Oh, he's he looks vulnerable. So let's try a headshot. <laughs> he's alone. Let's try a headshot, see how much damage it does. Oh, goodness, it's not going to do a lot. He's going to swat a fly. Yeah, he is. Oh, he is no. tough. Yeah, oh, no. tough. Just a little scratch. Yeah. Get up on him. All right, got this, got the spear. Oh, Working okay. it in close quarters. And, come on, get him, Carl. 
Oh boy, here we go. I believe in you, Carl. You he can, can do take it. him. He can take him. Honestly, he can do it. Carl, Carl's been practicing. He's very good at the game. <laughs> oh goodness! Yeah, There's look at that one hit. A, like a stun almost happening. Is that a oh. heavy hit that I'm? Oh no! Oh. Oh. Lord. You get an effort. Uh. effort. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, two hits from me. <laughs> okay. So look. The game is live. This yeah. Is, you know, we, we this take, is real gameplay. Exactly. Yeah. We, we take, uh, you know, we take games very seriously in the sense of we, you know, we want this to be the, the representation of the game as it is. We want players to see where it is today. So, yes, in a demo playthrough, Carl died you in front of everybody. You can get But so I've learned my lesson. You don't have that. to rub it in, Ash. <laughs> in front of everybody. I've learned my lesson and I'll just keep moving on. The level 25 is too, too high. Let's give them a wide berth now, and uh, so you're coming in. You're look, sort of leaving the wharf and coming. Oh, oh hey, buddy! Yeah, so Carl our friend. called for for his mount. And does this horse have a name, yeah, or is it a horse with no name? <laughs> I believe uh, this horse is uh, named uh, Amun Ray. Amun Ray. So, He's very but, handsome. Um, or she. A beautiful horse. Yeah. Uh, so Senu is uh, is our eagle companion. Uh, in this case, though, we wanted that mounts was uh, something that the player can actually collect more and more mounts, purchase more and more mounts, and we have many different types of mounts. So there's horses, oh, no many shit. types of beautiful horses, but also camels and eventually chariots. Uh, camels. Yeah, and they all have their value. And uh, so, so you can actually have different types of horses. Uh, Senu being the, the the eagle companion that stays with you through the journey. Uh, so there we go. So we have. Uh, we have this beautiful black horse here. Does the camel black have stallion. a spit attack? Because I hear they do that. <laughs> a spit attack, no, but I, but you can rear with the horse. You can rear with the horse. The camel... Get the hooves in there. <laughs> so we're sort of skirting the shoreline here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is... You guys have built, as you were saying uh, in the presentation, this is a country, you know? This is exactly. not just one city. So what actually, kind of region are we in? Yeah, actually, before, before we go in, so, so here we found uh, Umeria, which is, uh, w which is uh, a port village. Um, actually, maybe I'll ask Carl to, to go to the, the map. Sure. You can go to the map just to kind of give a general spacing of the world. So, so, we're, so this is the lake that we've seen with Senu. If we keep zooming out, keep zooming out, this is the, this wow, is the, the aspect enormous. of the demo. The lake is where the demo takes place. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Since we were riding a bit north of it earlier. We started, we started around here. Yeah, yeah. That's, why, that's how we unfog the world. By visiting the world, you unfog it. But just to give a breadth of this country that we've built. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, yeah, move around just to show it's... Whoa. Yeah, yeah, Whoa. It's, it, it keeps Ginormous. going. Ginormous. It's absolutely massive. Up to Alexandria in the north. Yeah, Alexandria, nice. there's the Giza Desert, the Nile Delta, the Giza Plateau, Memphis, the ancient city of Memphis, and it goes on. Then there's Fayum, uh, Crocodopolis down in the south. Crocodopolis. <laughs> yes, yes. Real what? city. I like that place, Thieves Land. Who do you, th who, what's going on? Does anybody ever go there? Really honest it's people. Like, I no, think no, daring, don't go down. daring players should go there. <laughs> There's a lot of cool stuff in it for them. Uh, so just to give an idea that, that we, you know, this is a country. Egypt is, um, it's such a majestic setting and we've dreamed of going to this place. And so when we started and we decided we're going to Egypt, we, we understood that it was going to be, uh, you know, a labor of love. It was going to, it was going to push us to develop new technologies to build such a, a crazy big world. And then to even populate the world with all these people that actually have agendas and purpose. Mm -hmm. For example, these, these people over here are being attracted by an event, if, if Carl would look at it. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, Egypt is hard. Egypt, uh, it was a hard place. Life. Let's investigate. Priest, what has the boy done to deserve this? This has nothing to do with you. Back away. The boy will get what he deserves. I serve so big. I serve so big. I am a slave. Boy, what are you accused of? I was charged with ferrying two gold sobecks to Crocodilopolis. Just out of port, my ship sank by the lighthouse. I almost drowned. The statues were lost. I didn't steal them. Silence! And you, step back, Sahedi! Wait, do not threaten me, Neb. I am a Magi. If the boy speaks the truth, I will find your gold sobecks. If he lies, he is yours to deal with. 
So here we, we got a little bit of a taste of, of Bayek's personality mm -hmm. and his attitude towards these masked, masked priests that abuse their power. And this is a, a side quest. So uh, our players can expect uh, this, this type of quality, you know, cinematics, great characters, uh, in the optional content, in the side quest. And we, we have hundreds of stories to tell. Egypt was a, a really wonderful place. Then we found so much amazing stories that we wanted a way to be able to tell them, and the quest structure allowed us to do that. But Very again, cool. we're saving the quest stuff for, for other streams, for, for YouTubers out there. So uh, so for now, we'll continue with uh, playing Our through the world. Our open world shenanigans. Yeah, if uh, you folks are just joining us, we're playing Assassin's Creed Origins on the Xbox One X uh, with Ash and Carl from the uh, Assassin's Creed Origins dev team. I'm Chris, this is Hanny, and uh, we'll be doing this for about 10 more minutes, so stick around. We've got plenty of open world uh, stuff to show you and some explorations here as Senu scouts out some more locations. So, She's a good girl. So here, actually, I'm going to ask Carl to not stealth this one. Uh, uh, the reason we're showing these different locations, different camps and warps, is actually we wanted to show a bit of stealth, we want to show a bit of fight, so I'm going to ask Carl all right, well, to, what, what do we got in our arsenal here? One. He to needs to <laughs> earn some redemption. Oh, yeah, OK. He needs to this earn time redemption. with this uh, one, Carl. Okay, okay, let's give it a try. For the okay, last. Here I come, out the bushes. Are you going in with the spear? Uh, I'll just shoot him in the chest first to wake him up. <laughs> Good wake up call. There we go. Wake nice. Him up. OK, all right, all right. Nice dodge. Come on, Carl. Redeem yourself. Boom. Nice job so far. At some point, yes. just to show the, the One more the, hit, and he's dead. <laughs> the yes. versatility yes. of the fight. We can, you can take out your bow. There we go, dynamically in the nice. fight. Head oh, oh headshot, bravo, bravo. All right, now, is he close to filling up his adrenaline oh, meter here? Yes. He seems like that might it's, be helpful It's getting there, it's getting there. I'll try and use it on the big dude. Hey, he is humongous. There we go, okay, just just get in there, unleash. There we go, Okay. oh boy, oh boy. Okay, here we go. We're gonna see Carl, uh oh. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Nice. Impaled. Very good, very good. <laughs> that was. Oh, you done good, Carl. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, Through the throat that time. Nice. <laughs> nice job, Carl. You <laughs> killed thank it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, give us a little broader context. Who are these dudes that Bayek is uh, dispatching with such yeah. a mash? So, so this is. We're, we're in, the, in the era of the Ptolemies. So, these are Ptolemaic guards. Um, they, they work for the people that Bayek is, is, is going after. And when I say going after, effectively, Bayek is unraveling a mystery. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know who, who these characters are that he's after. And so he comes to this place. He's actually looking for a contact to gain some info to lead him to eventually uh, his targets. And these are the Ptolemy guards who, f who work for these people. Uh, Bayek, being a, an Egyptian, uh, uh, a Magi, mm -hmm. He doesn't have a very good alignment with these people. Uh, I'll they represent, say. Uh, yes, they represent <laughs> he really uh, like the evil forces that are destroying his homeland. Uh, so it's anyway, so uh, these are the people he's after. This area of the world, just to say, if we take a look around, yeah, Carl, this is a beautiful shot Let's of the, give, the world. Carl, give us a slow pan here. So yeah. this is this is well, the actually, there's, a, there's a reach high point, so we can get a better view from there. Yeah. So All we're right. gonna do a, a viewpoint. A viewpoint. We'll do now the we're viewpoint. Just for a sec, we're seeing, uh, you know some serious climbing here, a hallmark of the Assassin's Creed franchise, but that rock didn't have any like obvious hand holds on it. Like, what's the approach to climbing in Origins? Uh, so the climbing, actually, before before we, we synchronize, just to look around. So pretty. Uh, so the climbing in Origins, it's, um, uh, so, so first we've revamped the controls, uh, the fluidity of the character. Uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback already from the people who've played the build that, that feel like the assassin is really responsive, listening to them, doing what they want. Mm -hmm. And we pushed that to the climbing where we said, you know what, uh, we should be able to climb any surface we want. So, so we've created a tech for 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 bike when he's climbing to be able to put his hands and footholds into crevices and so on on any surface, uh, so effectively to be able to climb anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted you know uh, as as the most seamless experience that we can have. Here you can see the world is absolutely beautiful. See that all uh, that distance, that top peak in the distance. You know we could just go there at some point if we wish to. Uh, swimming by boat, by camel, whatever, and, we, and there's three. secrets up there for us. There's really I cool love stuff. secrets. <laughs> there's really cool <laughs> discoveries um, to find. Here, why don't, why don't we synchronize? So here, the world is, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, kudos to our artists, our engineers, our technical so artists. Um, you know, this this world is something. Absolutely. And, you know, so synchronizing, you know, historically is sort of a way to learn more about an area, sort of clear the fog from an area. Yeah. But you mentioned earlier, 
the fog clears by you just you just traveling through the area. Yeah, uh, exactly. So we wanted to keep the idea of the we wanted to keep the the viewpoints mm -hmm. uh, as an homage to to the series. Leap uh, of faith, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Maybe we can explore a bit, walk through the yeah. area a little bit, just to give a flavor of the the village life. Villages are great places to to pick up quests, mm -hmm. to to go to shops, to uh, and obviously there are many quests inside villages. Uh, these are hubs of content. Um, but anyway, so oh, we're actually we're in a red zone right now. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, well, now the life. fleeing technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, I'd recommend fleeing, maybe. Or you can fight. Or you can fight. He's feeling strong from his last encounter. Yeah. Yep. He's digging that. Real confident. Mixing, uh, melee and now we're ranged. sort of we're busting out the warrior's bow here. That was a skill we unlocked earlier. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good point, yeah. good point. Switch, switch the warrior bow. So the warrior bow, it's effectively oh, our, shit. Yeah, our shotgun bow. <laughs> He shoots five arrows at once. There we go. Oh Boom. my god, uh, deadly. Bravo. Beautiful. Very efficient. It shoots five arrows at once. Uh, so when we talk about attributes and properties, you can actually find bows that you can actually have more arrows on them. You can set them on fire by default. Mm -hmm. um, so this this actual this compound here, it's actually part of, uh, part of a quest. Uh, don't want to ruin the quest for people, but this is somebody's home that's been, uh, let's say, uh, confiscated. And uh, Bayek will eventually uh, have to have to help those people. Oh, it's a porcupine. That's a, <laughs> that's a lot of arrows. But you can recover. It looks like you're recovering. Yeah, that. yeah. Oh. You can pick up your arrows. Uh, that that. And that ranged that combat that focus on sort of uh, you know, assassins have had ranged weapons in the past before, yeah. but with the bows in Origins, you guys are really trying to expand that. Yeah, yeah. We, we it, it's a it's a full blown third person shooter on that element. It's um, we we really wanted that the play styles we push. So range combat, melee, stealth, that this stuff uh, feels authentic. And if you just want to focus on that, that the game will fully support it and will go deep into that. So, so we've really pushed ourselves to, to develop these gameplays. Uh, the shooting feels great. The bows feel amazing. Uh, and there's a bunch of bows we haven't shown. There's the predator bow, which is kind of like a sniper. Uh, a little can kitty. we talk about yes, the cat? There's a little oh kitty. my God! There's, there's a, a cat. cat. There's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a great way to wrap this up. Like, we just saw a cat in ancient Egypt. Come in on, ancient guys. Egypt, and, and you know what? Want. Cats are very important in ancient it? Egypt. Can you pet it? So, so here, look. <laughs> so see? Okay, look. So systemically, you know, as I said, animals really oh. live in this world. Mm -hmm. And so this cat has, for some reason, an affection towards Bayek. He loves you. <laughs> or she. Or she's sticking around. Reciprocate. Oh, look at, oh look my at, she God. loves him. She loves him. <laughs> Car as, made as I said, we've, yeah. we've put a lot of effort on, on animals and their needs and what they do in the world. <laughs> yeah. I love that she appeared near the end of this stream. This is amazing. Fantastic yeah. moment. Yes. yes. Cool. Ash, this has been so great. Carl, thank you for showing off the game. Uh, there's a lot more to come. Siwa, my home, the sacred oasis. Be my eyes, Senu. This temple resembles a fortress. What has happened? Get out of my way. Ah! 
There you are, Medunamon. The next masked one on my list. Now it is my turn to tip the balance of Anubis. Be careful here. I should go drop these trees in the desert. Let the sand take them. Ah, a fine bow. for now. Guide me, Senu. Metunamon. Die, Medunamun. Die, you bastard! I'm going to kill you for that! See what is mine!
Assassin's Creed Origins has been officially announced. And I'm guessing you want more details? Me too. So I went to Ubisoft Montreal to get them. The Origins team is made up of key members of the crew that brought Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag to life. And when they set out to make this grand adventure, they knew they needed a setting to match their ambitions. You know what we say, history is our playground. Ancient Egypt is a, you know, it's a romantic setting, it's a mystical setting. There's a lot of diversity in the landscape of Egypt, and that's why it's fascinating. And that's why it was also amazing and uh, super inspiring for the team to recreate. Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is pyramids. We were going to have that into the game, and that's, it's a no-brainer. But ancient Egypt is much more than, than ancient pyramids. So history is like, a, is like a, a puzzle, right? My job and the way the, work, the team works is really to find out all these small details with this information. So what are the flowers, the trees that were back in Egypt? What were the animals? We tried to respect both the culture, the Egyptian culture, and to putting them into the game, uh, and also having something that's, that's interesting. How I actually saw ancient Egypt, first of all, in my imagination. I mean, you, you only see like, you know, sands and sort of, you know, pyramids, and it's really kind of dry. But actually, you know, during that time, it was lush and, you know, it was full of life. We have now the capacity from a technological standpoint to be able to create a, a massive countryside. You know, it's not a, it's not a city, it's, it's a whole country with many cities, many villages, many exotic uh, landscapes. This is why we decided to remove the minima, which is we want you to enjoy and to actually experience the beautiful world we're bringing to you. You will have to play the game to put some icons in the game, you know. Also the fact that we have a time of day that is systemic, we made sure that every single moment in the time of day is almost like a painting, you know. That's not something that is done, like, it's not automatic, it's really crafted. The world is, I think, has never been so alive and so lush and so interesting. And I hope players will, will have a lot of hours of fun uh, into Egypt with us. We started by saying we're in Egypt, which meant large landscapes, which meant vehicles like animals, like uh, chariots, camels. All of this, we felt we needed to make sure that all of this worked within the combat system. So naturally, we start talking about ranged combat, using the bow, using uh, throwable weapons. We allow the fight to be way more responsive, way more dynamic, so that the player can really play the way they want. In previous ACs, when you attack, the hero and the enemy came together, no matter the distance, effectively. This is gone now. Now, all of a sudden, you're spacing in the fight. How many enemies you're fighting, where are they, matters. If you swing in open air, you can. And you could screw yourself over by doing that. In melee combat, we have a lot of different types of weapons. We've got maces, swords, axes, uh, shields. You know, the reach of your weapon matters. The stats of your weapon matter. So you have to really judge your position in the fight mixed in with the length of your weapon, the speed of your weapon, the positions of the enemies. And in range combat, we have different types of bows. So we have uh, the most famous one is probably the Predator bow, which is a, the equivalent of a sniping rifle. We got a bow that has a super high rate of fire. And we have a, a bow that is the equivalent of a shotgun that shoots five arrows at the same time. We have many types of enemies with their own weapon loadout. Their weapon loadout dictates the way they fight. So players will have to learn how does the enemy with the spear and the shield work versus uh, the guy with the huge mace. And reading their behavior in the fight, then asking themselves, what am I comfortable using against these types of enemies in this situation? So it's a, it's a much different system than we've had in the past, but it's afforded us uh, really brand new experiences for players that I'm excited for people to try and play and, and give us feedback on it. Really, you, you cater your play style to what you like based on how you level up in the skill trees. And that's something we want to also visualize and show on the player. So it's not only something that we play in the stats, but it's also something you will see on the character. We give players many avenues within the crafting system, within the inventory system, uh, within the skills. So a concrete output of this means that you cannot assassinate anybody in the game with one shot. If you dedicate yourself to crafting your hidden blade, to increasing the, the damage that it can do, you might be able to get there. But you have to dedicate yourself to it. Now going more action RPG, forced us to say, no, no, you have to deal with the challenges of the game, the levels of the enemies, and um, you can be that super stealthy assassin, but dedicate yourself to it. Now, because we have levels, we have uh, RPG mechanics, it has afforded us to be able to do epic bosses. So, in, in the main story of the game, 
but also in the, in the world where we know some players, if they're really comfortable with the challenge of the fight, they can go and push themselves to, to fight the most ultimate bosses. It's a very big world also, so to make sure that the player would be constantly engaged within that world, um, we created um, NPCs that have their own agenda. They have their own purpose in the world, so they, they work, they go back to their home to sleep, and you can help them with the quest system. So you meet them, you talk with them, and they say, I need some help with this. And as a player, you get to make a decision whether or not you want to engage with that specific type of, a, of NPC. So I think that's interesting, and that also gives flexibility to explore the world the way you want to and live the story the way you want to as a player. The player, of course, picks up these quests and chooses what they want to work on. Sometimes the quests will intermingle. Sometimes you're in the middle of one quest and you'll see a que another quest uh, person walking by and you can jump into that. And we wanted this very organic feel to the world. There's a lot of people to meet, a lot of characters, and they have a lot of stories to tell. It's not only an origin story, it's also witnessing key moments of the franchise and the reasons why decisions were made. W was it just someone decided, I'm gonna put on a hood? No, no, there, there's stories behind all of this and these are the experiences that you explore in the game. Uh, so for sure, Eagle Vision is, is one more of those elements where why is it called Eagle Vision and where did it really come from? Bayek has also uh, this connection, this very special connection with, uh, with the Eagle Senu that you can use, you know, to really scout and, and plan ahead, you know. So with your eagle, you'll be able to spot, you know, who's, uh, what the challenge is about, you know, seeing the level, the number of enemies. In this exact setting was also the perfect moment and the perfect, actually, world and culture and mythology to, to see, to witness the, the birth of the, of the brotherhood. I mean, it's, it's so much fun, man. It's so great. Like, it's so, so cool and it's an honor, you know. Uh, but telling an origin story, you get to put some pieces of the puzzles together and explain a little bit more to the player. Uh, so that's really cool.